Go with me over to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12 and verse 6. It says, Though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool. I will speak the truth, but I refrain lest anyone should think of me above that which he sees in me to be or hears from me, that at least I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pled with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. He said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. Most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and in, in, uh, in needs in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong, I become a fool. In boasting, you have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended by you, for in nothing was I behind the most eminent apostle, though I am nothing. And so this is Paul, and I, I, I brought us here because I want you to see what the Lord said. In your weakness, I am made strong. You know, in, when you're weak, when you're in a place of vulnerability, when you're in a place of, of having no way, no options, there's no way out. I mean, it's impossible. That's when he comes through. And, and in this case, God gave him a messenger of Satan to buffet him. Which means, a buffet means a wave crashing against the, the, you know, the, you ever see a wave crashing in the ocean? It's every town he went to, Satan was there to buffet him. And, you know, he was stoned to death, he was beaten, he was scourged. He, you know, uh, God told him beforehand, you're going to suffer many things. And so if you read the previous chapter, you'll see that. And so when we're vulnerable, when we're in need, that's when we can see God. That's when we see him. You know, and God trains us that way. Um, go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. It says, And you shall remember that the Lord your God tied you all in the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, to test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He humbled you and caused you to hunger and fed you. He caused you to hunger. He caused you to be in lack. He caused you to need him. So he humbled you and allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You know, so he... He causes these situations, not in the world, not in the lives of people in the world, but when we join his army, when we join his family, he causes us to need him. It's called forced reliance. He forces us to rely on him. He, he, he makes situations that force us to want to need him. And, and what that does is it draws us closer to him you know, and, and that drawing closer to him is what perfects us and gives us patience and gives us faith. He did this for 40 years, and think about it. He did it to a generation that was faithless. This is the generation that everyone over 20 died, and so everyone under 20, he was training this way. And he brought an answer that never existed, manna, right? So, you know, and I... I, we could go through the whole Bible. When Moses is at the Red Sea, he has a super army coming against him. He has a mountain on the left, mountain on the right, and there's no way out. There's no way you could think of parting the Red Sea. There's, it's just impossible. There was no hope in the people. Moses even had a hope issue because God said, why are you complaining to me? Lift your rod and go forward. So, 
Nothing is hopeless for God's people. We can't see an answer. When we can't see an answer, that's when we're vulnerable. That's when we don't know. We can't see it. We can't feel it. And, and so that situation causes us to grow. James started his book with this. You know, and so when, when you look at how important this is, it's vital to us understanding God, to us understanding Satan. Satan will come against you when you're doing something for the kingdom of God. Try doing something for the kingdom of God. He'll show up at your door. But that's the calling. That's the purpose. That's who we are, right? In John 16, verse 1, it says, These things I've spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogue. Yes, the time will come and whoever kills you will think he, offers, uh, uh, he is offering to God service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the time comes, you may remember that I have told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. You know, Jesus is telling us, particularly in our generation, you know, we're, we're approaching the end times, whether it's, you know, uh, 10 years or 20 years or 30 years, we're approaching it, right? And so he's telling us, that whoever comes against us will think they're doing God's service. So in that situation, we have, a, we have a challenge. Do we trust God? Do we trust the word of God? Do we trust who we are in God? Or do we go the way of the world? Do we accept deliverance, right? In John 15, he says, the world hates you. You know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember that the word that I've said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my words, they will keep your words. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. And so, you know, this is, a, 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 I think, another key factor in this process is we have to look different for them to hate us. If we look like them and we act like them and we work like them and we invest like them and we're like them, then we're them. We're not denying ourselves and not, a, you know, coming out of the world. And so we need to understand that why the Bible says in Matthew 24 that we'll be hated for his namesake. They're going to kill us, and this is in the end times. And, you know, why? Because we have a different paradigm in life. We have a different way of looking at things in life. We don't settle for what, it, you know, the world has to give us. We go to God. We live for God. And, and so when we do that, we're different. And being different is what they don't like. You know, we're seeing it today in our culture. We're starting to see, you know, resistance to Christianity, resistance to conservatism, you know. And, and so Jesus said it was going to happen. We're not going to stop it. What we need to do is teach about it and pull as many people with us as we can. You know, go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. It says, but if our gospel is veiled... It is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this world or the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, least the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we are not, we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord in ourselves, your bondservants for Christ. For if God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shined in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, but we have this greatest tr this treasure, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, 
but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We're struck down, but not destroyed. You know, what does that mean? We're hard-pressed, yet we're not crushed. You know, in, in, in pain, we're still standing, right? We're perplexed, in, 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 but not in despair. We don't understand why. We don't understand what. But we understand that God is God. You know, uh, uh, we're persecuted, but we know we're not forsaken, right? And it says we're struck down and hit, go to the mat, but we get up and we're not destroyed. You know, so this is part of the process. When, when you look at it, it says always carrying about in our body the dying of the Lord. That's his cross, right? That the life of Jesus may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. You know, it's like, it's like he's saying we're called to suffer. We're called to be persecuted. You know, and so, you know, who wants to do that? You know, and we do, right? We want to be different. We don't want to force it. But we want to be different. We want to live different. We want to act different. We want people to see the light that's in us. We want them to see the fruit that's in us, right? So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore we speak. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the grace of God, having sp spread throughout many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose our heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet our inward man is being renewed day by day. But this light affliction which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more excellent and eternal weight of glory. You know, so in that, there's a lot of revelation. We could teach a whole session on this, right? But here's the thing. You know, it's almost implied that we will suffer in the earth. We live in the United States. We have a lot of comfort, a lot of freedom. The, the country was founded, you know, by Christians and and so we've had this for many, many years. But when you look at what it says here, it's almost like we, you know, we have this treasure in earthen vessels, right? We have this power in earthen vessels to stand. You know, when we're perplexed and we're confused and we don't know why, we know there's a God who does, right? When we're, when we're persecuted, we're not forsaken. He's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. He's with us, right? And so... Through this process, we manifest the persecution in our lives when we, when we live like this. 